Hey YouTube family, so I wanted to make this video asking y'all a genuine question. I want to know how y'all would handle this situation because I need y'all to tell me if I'm tripping. Um, I don't know if maybe the way I do things need to be corrected or not, so I'm going to share a hypothetical situation with y'all. It's really not hypothetical, it actually happened, but I just want to know after I share this in detail, how y'all would react in this situation after me providing the detail that I do, um, what would your reaction be? <sighs> so, um, as y'all know, I share often how the Father, which he does for everybody, um, the Lord exposes a lot of people to me in dreams, uh, preferably, you know, obviously people I'm in relationships with. Um, just exposing the hearts of individuals and he's done it with the sister in Christ that I'm in fellowship with recently and um, He's done it through scripture through me praying. He's uh, led me to nothing but judgment scriptures uh, Most of them different passages saying the same exact thing um, As far as a dream uh, Pretty much confirming it was a very blatant vivid dream which I'm going to share the contents of in a few minutes, but just pretty much confirming everything he already told me through the passages and that I've discerned for myself as a, uh, as a believer. I just want to know, and this is a, this is a genuine question. How would y'all deal with a situation to where the Lord has thoroughly, thoroughly like exposed somebody to you? Like, I mean, he's basically given you a dream, maybe gave you a word of knowledge. Somehow the father has gotten it through to you that this is not a genuine sister he's basically exposed her heart to you whether it's how she feels about you or who she really is as a person how she really doesn't care to obey him she maybe doesn't fear him basically just exposing her y'all know how the lord be doing so and you decide to remove yourself from communication with this sister because of what the lord has shown you or maybe if, if y'all are brothers watching, y'all could, you know, just use your situation as if it were another brother in Christ. So you decide to remove yourself from fellowship and communication because of that. Because the kind of person that I am, I believe what the Lord shows me. And this is something I've taught like years ago. I mean, you walk, uh, you walk by faith, not by sight. And the true hidden things are really uh, hidden in the spirit. So you have to believe what the Lord is showing you about somebody over what they're telling you and over what your experience is. And I can't speak for any other believer, but I can speak for myself. That's how I roll. If I need to know something about some somebody, that's if he doesn't get to me first and show me about who they really are or what they about. I'll just pray and ask the Lord and he'll give me a dream or something. And I believe what he shows me. How would y'all deal with a situation where father has done this for you? You already know who the person really is. They full of crap not a genuine believer at all the lord has basically exposed all kind of details you know for your knowledge and for your benefit and they want to have a conversation with you with him in the context in the setting of a genuine believer and this actually happened and i'm just going to share with y'all how i responded to it because of what the Lord has shown me, because I already know what he's told me about this sister. Um, I actually had a prophetic dream given to me two years ago that he actually revealed to me was about this sister. I had no idea it was going to be her. So, and I had already interpreted the dream and everything that she was basically a fake and phony character. Because the way he showed the woman in the dream, he didn't show a literal woman. He showed an anonymous figure. But he wanted uh, to communicate to me, this is somebody that you're going to know intimately at this time. So I'm inter I already interpreted everything. Like I, I could feel her impressions, the way she felt in the dream, what kind of person she was. The person was literally telling me in the dream they were not a real friend to me. And I'm not going to share any further details because I don't want to reveal the person's identity. But um, so I just want I just want to know like how y'all would deal with the situation. If like you're, pre you're pretty much retaining all this knowledge and information that God showed you so you can understand what situation you're in. And who this person really is. But your experience with them is <laughs> obviously going to be contrary to that. Because people have an issue with being real about who they really are. And being honest about what the Lord exposes about them. So my reaction to the situation as far as a conversation being initiated was. I didn't say anything. 
Because the way I feel about it, and this is what I want y'all to respond to, the way I feel about stuff like that, if I feel like if somebody can't be honest with me about what the Lord is showing me about them, and I've already come to you in some format, um, whether it was through correction or rebuke, or I'm, I'm blatantly, that's most, most of the time I will actually share what the person, what the Lord told me. I used to do it a lot more than I do now. And there was just a lot of deflecting that took place. Obviously a lot of denial. The person just acted like none of it was true. Um, it wasn't the Lord. And, um, I know for a fact that he wanted me to tell this sister, all those things, 100%. Because all of it was true. All of it was uh, things I discerned, things he put in my spirit to say. And that's the reaction that I got. Just a lot of pride and denial and deflecting, which is what most people with wicked hearts do. So how I feel about a situation like that with this individual, for me, all it takes is one time. When I see that you're somebody that's not really humble and that you don't really take correction, and you can basically look the Holy Spirit right in the face through one of his people and lie and say that this is not who you really are. This is not what you actually did. Um, not only do I not have respect for you as a person, especially if you are a believer in the faith. I definitely don't have respect for you after that. But I know what kind of individual I'm dealing with now. So when it comes to correction or rebuke, you know how scripture says, you know, do not rebuke an angry man or a proud man. They're going to hate your counsel. They showed you the first time that they don't fear the Lord. And this is actually a common thing that a lot of believers do. I personally do not understand why people do that. I mean, you would think that people would understand by now that being in the body of Christ, there's nothing hidden in the dark. God exposes everybody. And I'm the kind of sister where if the Lord showed you something about me, if my heart is faulty or if I'm finicky or I'm fake or I'm phony or I have any kind of flaws to sister, it is what it is. I mean, he exposed me. And if you confront me about it, if I really love him, I'll be honest. Like, yeah, I do feel that way. You know, I don't I don't like when people when you confront people, especially if you have a prophetic anointing, because then it's a whole nother dimension with him wanting you to confront the person, which is what he did with me recently with this sister. So this isn't this wasn't even just a situation of discerning, you know, certain things and communicating with the sister about uh, just basically calling her out on her crap. Basically, this is a situation where the father wanted me to do it as a prophetess. Basically, I want you to be a witness against her because of what you discerned. And I want you to tell her this. He got on me about it. He led me to read breaking intimidation revealed to me that I was submitting to an Ahab spirit. Because uh, that's exactly um, it's exactly what Elijah did. He ran away from Jezebel. A lot of prophets do not like confrontation. And he basically, you know, put me on the spot, had me read in that book, like, this is what you're dealing with. And you are a prophetess. And this is something that I'm actually going to continue to have you doing. So you need to get over that now. And uh, as far as intimidation, it's not so much fear of confronting man. I just personally don't like the friction that happens when the Lord does want me to come to somebody and say something. And you can literally feel the pride rise up in this person, like the wickedness of their heart. I'm not just talking about somebody getting defensive. I mean, you can literally discern this person does not love or fear God at all. And they're communicating to you, you know, through their body language. I hope you don't think you about to correct me about anything. You know, it's just that energy. And it's kind of like he had me reading Jeremiah, like everything. And I'm just like, I wouldn't try to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And it's like, you know, people need to understand, like when it comes to being a prophet or a prophetess, that's not something that you just use as a title to sound cute. Like this is the actual, you know, ministry or calling that the father is using you for. It's not just something you do on YouTube. I mean, you can do it through social media, but it's a whole other story when the Lord wants you to do something like that in person. You have to deal with these people's wicked spirits and people's hearts get exposed. And a lot of Christians hearts really do get exposed when God is using his people to correct them about something. It's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. If you think getting heckled on YouTube is one thing, I mean, imagine coming to this person in private and, and I'm reading Jeremiah. And to be honest, I didn't finish reading it, but just a few verses and chapters I did read I understood where he was going with this and what he wanted me to do and he was trying to get me to stand in my position and my identity and my authority and the first thing I read is um you are going to tell them what I told you to tell them and you're going to speak what I want you to speak you know do not be afraid of their faces for I will be with you etc etc 
So for me, the intimidation, which the Lord exposed it, it is what it is. It was intimidation. I don't like coming up against those kinds of spirits in Christians. Not only is it very uncomfortable, which is what the Lord wants his prophets to get over, because you're going to have to face the people that he wants you to go to and tell them this, whether they like it or not. They're going to have to be mad at him because it's his word. It's not yours. But even as a person, I just <laughs> being a person who the Lord does expose a lot of people to. I specifically don't like Christians with wicked hearts. You are not a true believer at heart at all. And that's something that really needs to be exposed about a lot of us. If that is, in fact, the case with us as believers, you don't truly fear him. You don't truly love him. You're a hypocrite. I don't like to feel that energy through people. I already don't respect you as a person after him revealing something like that to me about you. So I'm avoiding the situation and he's trying to like break me out of that. Like you can't do that because I'm going to keep using you to do this. So you need to learn how to do it now. <sighs> so my reaction was just um, I didn't say anything and I didn't say anything. I wasn't really responsive. I wasn't really cooperative with the conversation because the place that I was coming from was just like, I already know you're fake and phony. The Lord pretty much has revealed everything I need to know at this point as far as what I'm dealing with and who you really are. And I genuinely don't know how to deal with an individual like that who is professed to be in the faith. I just know to believe what he showed me. But I wanted to ask y'all, how do you deal with somebody like that? How do you truly deal with somebody that father has already pretty much given you ample information and exposure about? Um, I just feel like I couldn't take her seriously. It wasn't to be disrespectful. It wasn't just to be petty or shady. I was definitely suppressing a lot of frustration, which made me passive aggressive because I have a lot to say. But I just feel like when I consider what he already showed me that you don't take correction, you don't like rebuke and this is who you really are. You're not really walking in his spirit. You don't really care to really, you know, obey him like that. I just don't take you seriously as a Christian. So I just feel like there's not really a conversation to be had. That's the place that I was coming from. I feel like the whole conversation to even, you know, communicate with you as if you were a true sister is fake to me because I don't believe you are one based on what he showed me. So I feel like the whole point of having a conversation would just be redundant, to, to be honest. And that's that's basically how I, I responded to the situation. And after it happened, the Lord, he put a very dis-ease in my spirit because I feel like uh, he was basically putting in my spirit that I was disobedient because he gave me a dream about her. And in the dream, I'm just going to share some minor details. <laughs> this is an individual who has been watching my channel for years. And uh, some of the things that were made known to me is, um, which I want to say right now, <sighs> I don't, I just speak what the Lord tells me to share. I teach what he tells me to teach. You know, I give to people on my channel what he gives to me. I don't have any control over who obeys certain messages and who doesn't. And um, in the dream, he was basically showing, the, showing me that this particular sister, I think I was just calling her out on certain things because I was just like, you know, I find it very interesting that I'm somebody that you've been watching and following for years and you've literally know all these convictions, you know, all this stuff, but you're still participating in these things. And what he showed her doing in the dream, um, I think I was basically saying that she wasn't a genuine sister, like she was a fraud and um, basically just just merely religious, hypocritical figure. And she said in the dream, she was like, oh, I thought you knew. <laughs> yes, I like, the Lord really be exposing people. And if she was her true self in the dream, there was no demonic element to her. He was just showing her true heart, stuff I've already discerned. And um basically she was confirming, like, yeah, like I've been watching you for years and I know exactly what your messages say, but I never truly converted to any of those things in my heart. So she was fake from the beginning, you just didn't know it. And uh he showed me all that about her in the dream. And as far as the accusations I was making about her, it was stuff that had been in my spirit to say but I noticed in the dream I was doing it very carnally like it, it was something that wasn't spirit led it was just something like you're just kind of saying it like it was on your chest you've been wanting to say this and say that things you've discerned or things you've experienced you know things like that that uh bring up a witness against her as a professed believer which she should be corrected about 
and it was just very flesh motivated and he was showing me how she was responding to it in the dream and she didn't care she didn't care that she was having the word of god presented to her she didn't care about the fact that she was being corrected she, he just showed me she didn't care but specifically the part about the um the makeup and uh the body fragrances i think i had addressed that in the dream and that was her response to that that he showed oh i thought you knew you know <laughs> basically admitting i am fake and phony i don't really obey any of those convictions i've been watching i was confused like okay well that doesn't make any sense to me so um there were some other things i was speaking to her about in the dream that i was just kind of confronting that had been on my mind just different issues and <sighs> i don't think i'm going to share that detail basically it ended with the fellowship being broken and uh not so much in a way to where the dream was communicating he didn't want it to happen the dream was it was almost like he gave it to just kind of further expose her heart stuff that he basically already told me it was kind of just like the icing on the cake like this is who she really is and um the way the dream made me feel what i took from it i'm like well for one all the stuff i was saying is true and it's something i would say out of frustration but it wasn't spirit led in the dream like it kind of felt like it was probably something he wanted you to tell her maybe in a different way but as I just shared earlier, I had already done that. And when I got the reaction that I did, I saw, okay, well, this is not somebody with a humble heart. I mean, there's no point in trying to correct somebody like that. She doesn't care. There's no fear of the Lord in her. So what I took from the dream is seeing how she was reacting to everything I was saying. She genuinely did not care. Um, and that does play out the same way in real life. That is true. So he didn't really show too much different than what I've already experienced with this sister, to be completely honest with you. Um, he just kind of confirmed everything. So I said, OK, well, that makes me feel like if I was to communicate with this sister again at some point and bring these issues to her that I've noticed as a witness against her, it would kind of be pointless because she already showed she doesn't have a genuine fear of the Lord like that to really take it seriously. She doesn't care. Like, she doesn't... It's not an authority to her. So, I had this dream. And the very next day... And it was for me. It wasn't for me to share with her at all. The very next day, this is when the sister had approached me. For... To try to have, like, a genuine, you know, conversation. Um, and... In a very, uh portrayingly godly tone as if to try to be serious about the lord and so you can imagine what's in my head like the lord just gave me a dream <laughs> showing me your heart like i mean literally last night I, i'm not really i just didn't take it serious so i mean i don't really know how to deal with situations like that to be honest it's the most awkward situation to be in i don't know if any of y'all have experienced stuff like that um <sighs> And I've been asking him, like, what exactly is my instruction with this whole prophet thing? Because I don't, I don't, I mean, saying what the Lord wants you to say, that's one thing. But when it comes to, like, you know, actually fellowshipping with these people, if, like, if God is showing you that they're not true believers, why would I talk to you like you are one? That's just how I feel about that situation. Like, I mean, how do you show grace, quote unquote, to somebody like that who he's already exposed to you is not really a true sister? As far as her heart is concerned. Not that she couldn't repent and couldn't correct that. They could definitely have the Holy Spirit. But as far as obedience and you got a lot of people that's just really not trying to follow and walk with him like that. And I, I'm actually surprised that he exposed her the way he did in that dream. You know, highlighting the fact that she's been following you and watching your videos for years. But she's never truly obeyed me with any of the things that I've used you to share. And I thought that was interesting that he highlighted that in that dream. Like this is always who she was. And that's kind of why she said in the dream, oh, I, I thought you knew you know <laughs> so um i want to know how y'all would deal with that situation in each specific detail that i shared in this video because the way that i dealt and deal with things like that like i said i just believe what the lord shows me over anything that you say anything i see anything i experience whether it be through social media or not I can discern, period. You know, we all have a, a certain level of discernment. And mine just happens to be very high. Thanks to the Lord. Because you need it with people like this. You really do. Because people like to insult your intelligence. This is one thing I don't like about human beings. Like, number one, shout out to all the seers out there. 
because I can't stand when I've literally had the father already show me something about you or he gives me vivid dreams like specifically showing me how people really feel about a situation even if it's not anything negative about the person he'll just it'll just be a certain level of vulnerability to where when I come to them as a prophetess and I say hey the Lord showed me this I want to apologize to you because he told me you felt this way about the situation they get very quiet or they just kind of deny deflect like oh no 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 it wasn't that serious oh no like I didn't or they just don't say anything and it just personally annoys me like I know that we all have different hearts I know that everybody's not really genuine and pure to actually be honest <laughs> about what the Lord has shown somebody else about them you know it's better to just lie and just make it seem like you don't know what the person's talking about and I've, I've gotten both from different people uh, some people I came to them and just gave them a mouthful <laughs> I mean God showed me so much stuff um dreams interpreted you know like I have a thorough understanding of the situation and they just didn't respond to it and then the father will give me a dream afterwards showing me what their true response and reaction was which was bearing witness to everything that I said and then I've had some people they just say like oh no that's not the case you know it was this this I just don't like when people lie to me period like I understand it comes to the territory and the anointing but it just frustrates me personally like when you lie to my face as a person like it's disrespectful to me and I know that you know in that context depending on how he sends you to them if it's not personal if it's actually a ministry assignment it's not really you they're lying to it's him I get it but I just have issues with even apart from spiritual discernment that we have with people you know being able to detect pride we have that ability as believers thank God being able to discern different kinds of spirits at work if with people if you do have the gift of discerning of spirits you even know which spirit you're dealing with in the person you can tell when it manifests and even apart from that body language facial expressions people's energy you know like this is stuff that you pe some people i think are just really blind to this stuff they just ignore it i think it's because they're not looking for it when you're somebody who's already sensitive to the things of the spirit you pick up on that stuff like clockwork and it's just kind of like you really can't hide from somebody who is intimate with the holy spirit and our capability of being naked before somebody else who the lord has shown those things to really exposes a lot about the true condition of our hearts because if you're not an honest person then your heart is full of darkness if you can't even be honest with this person here knowing f and they be knowing the lord showed you this stuff that's that's what that's what i really don't like i hate when people deflect and try to make you feel like you're the crazy one god didn't tell you what he showed you about me i'm just like are you what level of wickedness are we on right now <laughs> like this is like this stuff the devil likes in your mind that's stuff that narcissists do that's crazy i mean if the person genuinely just doesn't believe that the lord told or showed you those things because I've, I've had people i've had people that the lord exposed to me and i actually came to the sister and told her everything he showed me oh god don't show people stuff like that i said well honey you are sadly mistaken because <laughs> he showed sure it exposed your behind from top to bottom so you get those responses and then i think there are some people the father will show you because you're the seer you're the one who's really close to him with that prophetic anointing but they could genuinely be blinded to you know the true condition of their hearts and that's probably why he does want you to tell them their error and what their response should be is to seek him about what you say i can't stand when somebody comes to you with a prophetic word whether it be rebuke or correction or something else and they're just like oh no that's not true yeah, I, yeah that's not true i was just like oh no i i know that was not for me like so how do you know it's not for you how do you know the lord isn't trying to use this person to expose some aspect about yourself that you're oblivious to the heart is deceitful and wicked sometimes it takes people around you or it takes for the lord to put somebody in your midst or sometimes it takes for the lord to send somebody to you up close and personal or however he does it because we can't always see the things that are wrong with ourselves sometimes you can get so comfortable in your funk you can get so comfortable in your spiritual dysfunction you you don't see anything wrong with being that way and he will use a witness to come and tell you literally as a progress report you know we have a lot of believers come around us you know they discern things they they can see okay your character your personality this and this and this and off not to be judgmental or not to 
you know, do comparison because none of us are perfect, but the Lord will use people in our lives to do that, to let us know where we stand with him. And I feel like when somebody just automatically responds like that, it's just nothing but pride. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm confused of how, you know, as, as daughters and sons, our immediate reaction, not even just to things like that, just in general, it should just be humility. If this is true, I can't see it. I'm going to pray about it because if, the, if father really showed you that about me, I need to take care of that. Why doesn't anybody respond this way? It's automatic deflection. It's automatic denial, automatic rebellion, really. It's just coming from a wicked heart. And sometimes the person knows this stuff is true. They know stuff about themselves. They just don't want you to try to come and tell them about it. They're comfortable in who they are. And they don't want the Holy Spirit coming and trying to shift up their junk. So either way it goes, you know, whether you do know the stuff that was said about you is true. Because, I mean, it, it cuts, you know, we don't like conviction. It doesn't, especially if you're somebody dealing with pride. You know, you don't ever like somebody, you know, coming at you and basically reading you for filth in the spirit. Okay, I mean, not in a car in a way, but you get what I'm saying. And then, you know, if there is a person who just sincerely just does not see that about themselves at all, they just, for some reason, honey, they're spiritually blinded. They cannot peel them scales off of their eyes. Um, just pray about what the person told you. Because our first concern should be, if a sister discerned that about me, if I made her feel that way, something's off about my character. And this is what believers don't do. It is true that there is a lot of accusation that comes up about us that is completely false. It is true that a lot of our communication and our intentions gets misunderstood. And people can make certain assumptions about us that's just simply not true and that needs to be corrected. But sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes what somebody is actually discerning about your personality and your character and certain things about your lifestyle and they're coming to you about that. Sometimes that's very much true. And instead of just rejecting it automatically, our first initial reaction should be what should concern you is that if you're supposed to be a woman of God, which is what you're professing to be, that's your lifestyle, right? Or a man of God. And you know the fruit that the scriptures tell you to have. If somebody came around you or if somebody has interacted with you, whether it be through, you know, social media, however y'all are, you know, fellowshipping. And they say, hey, sis, you made me feel this way. Or, hey, I, I, I've just sensed this pride in your spirit, or, you know, something like this, that, and the third. You shouldn't get defensive. You should be like, okay, well, if I made you feel like that, something is wrong in me. You know, there's a possibility she could be misunderstood. Maybe, you know, she took something the wrong way and it's, it's not true at all. And that's that that can be that's a conversation that can be had in grace. That's not a big deal. But if it is true. That should concern you as far as the walk that you're trying to walk. You shouldn't get offended. Correct it. Because whether she told you or not, he can send somebody else. And they gonna say the same exact thing about you because he's sending people to correct you. And you get mad at the person. And it's just like, how are we going to get mad? How are we going to claim and profess a holy God? You know, profess to, you know, live and walk out this Bible at every reading. And, you know, when somebody sees something about you that contradicts what you say that you profess, how are you going to get mad? <laughs> it's like, correct it. You're flawed. If the Lord is using them to tell you that, he obviously wants fruit born in that area. He wants you to be conformed to the image of his son. He wants the best for you. He's not doing it to be ugly to you. You know, and there's there's a sense of insincerity when it comes to us. We feel like we can follow God partially. It's enough to be religious or, you know, just read scripture and have Bible study. And so you want to read and have Bible study and go to church and do all of this different stuff. But when it comes to him actually touching what you don't like, it what makes you uncomfortable, your character, things about your heart, things about your attitude, you're selfish. Those sensitive issues and he uses somebody else to do it. You throw you, you spit him in the face. Oh, no, that's not me. I'm not like that. Or you get mad at the sister, you know. And like I said, these situations, it really just exposes our hearts and how we really feel towards him. Because if you really loved him, like you say you do. The fact that you have a flaw like that, it would it would bother you because you wouldn't want to displease him if you really love him as a father. And what you're going to find with a lot of Christians and why they respond that way is that they really don't know him. 
And I, I, I'm not saying that loosely. I, I really mean that. You will be surprised how many sisters you're in fellowship with and y'all talking and talking about the Lord, talking about the word. When you really get to know this person, you start discerning. They don't really know his voice like that. I can tell you don't really know him. And it starts to make sense. How can they fear somebody they don't know? How can they truly love somebody they can't hear? They've pretty much just been you know, f faking the funk. Maybe not insincerely, maybe genuinely trying to live the walk, but they don't really have a true spiritual relationship with him. And when it comes to him trying to bring these issues to the front, it explains why they respond the way they do, because there is no relationship there. You thought there was a relationship there. And some of us be shocked. <laughs> like I know a lot of us be shocked by like, you know, sometimes it is just pride with a sister. And you can tell it's a genuine sister. She just need to be humbled, you know, just pray for her. But some people, I think I've had people the Lord has exposed to me that were not genuine sisters. And I was like, I was like, where? I said, I didn't even see that. I mean, people I never had any beef with, no offense with. And he started using them as negative symbols in my dream for spirits. I'm like, her? Are you serious, Lord? Like she felt this way about me and I didn't know it. He's like, yeah. So it's, it's, you'd be surprised how many believers that you're probably in fellowship with now. You probably have an authentic relationship with God. They don't have that. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Like it's, it's, it's devastating to, to experience, to be completely honest with you. It's kind of creepy. It's, it's very disappointing, but <sighs> so that's just my question to y'all is taking in everything I just said. How would y'all deal with a situation like this? If this is something that God did with you on the daily, like, I mean, this is a frequent thing, you know, he shows you somebody's heart. You know, the true reality about this person, you know, what's really in their hearts, but you still have to engage with them to some degree. You still got to go to their house or they're a family member or something. You still got to be around them. And they still, you know, have this pretense of being something contrary to what he clearly showed you they really are. How do you communicate with that person moving forward? without us living in dishonesty because we are genuine believers i'm not being fake and phony i know i mean I, I keep a pure heart before the lord but i have to believe what he showed me about you at the same time without being ugly how do you do that because i feel like if i move forward and i treat you like a sister in christ when i know that there's a lot of things that need to be corrected and he's showing me otherwise i feel like i'm being fake i'd rather just not talk to you at all I feel like I do myself and him a disservice if I'm basically a spiritual enabler to somebody you're portraying to be that you're really not. So I don't even want to give you that satisfaction of fellowshipping with you as a sister when the Lord has shown me this. That's where I stand. I want to know how y'all would deal with that situation. Um, <laughs> I just feel like you don't pat somebody on the back and keep making them feel like they're not doing anything wrong or, you know, supporting this false persona of who they're making it seem like they are when you know that's really not the case. And the father has shown you that himself. What the heck do you do without being disrespectful or like awkward? Like, how does that work? 